Howdy, hey guys. So today I have a bit of a two-in-one video for you guys. I'll be quickly talking you through my... What month are we in? September. Oh my god, it's my birth month. How exciting. My um, September TBR. And after that, I'll just give you my mini reviews of the books that I read in August. I know it's a bit of a strange order to do it in. You'd usually do the TBR afterwards. But I just kind of want to be really quick. And I've got way more books that I read in August to talk about. So I thought I'd leave the long one till the end of the video. But anyway... I decided that this month I will focus on the A Year of Fun theme and challenge. Um, I haven't done the A Year of Fun challenges for a little while now, but I was looking down um, the list of what's involved in this month and I thought I might as well give it a go just because I think I wanted something to focus on a little bit this month and because September is usually a slow month for me because I'm getting ready to go back to like an education of sorts and stuff I don't really read too much but I really wanted to kind of focus and see if I can read a lot and also because it's my birth month I'm usually doing stuff so yeah I thought let's just let's just give it a go so um by the time this is uploaded I do believe we'll be about halfway through the, the readathon so Sorry if this isn't like, I don't know, sorry if it's coming to you a bit late, I guess. Um, but this month, it's spanning from September the 4th to September the 10th. Oh my God, if I can get my words out, till September the 10th. Um, basically, the Ayerophon, it starts on the first full week of each month, and they have a different thing each month. So I think it's only this year that they've started to do challenges as well as themes. So I'm just reading off the email here. The theme of this month is standalones. So I've selected a few books that I do believe are standalones. I'm not too sure, so correct me if I'm wrong. And the challenge is one word titles. I'm not too bothered about the challenge just because it was difficult to find standalones in my collection with one word titles. And I don't know, some of them that I did find I wasn't in the mood of reading. So I just kind of left that out. So that's not going to be my focus. This, this week it's going to be trying to read as many standalones as I can and for that I've selected three books um, I feel like one of them is pretty chunky I, I don't know they're not the quickest reads I'd say but anyway here's what I've got so the first one I'm currently reading at the moment is Following Ophelia by Sophia Bennett um, I believe this was a new release this year I think it came out like if I remember March 7th um, of this year um, it's a, I believe, YA historical fiction. I'm not too far in. I think I'm about 50 or so pages at the moment. And I'm kind of still feeling it out. Um, I'm not too sure exactly what it's about, to be honest. But it's a really pretty cover. It's definitely a cover buy. And I had heard a fair bit about it before I bought it. But that's the front cover. And then that's the back cover. And it just says, Mary Adams is a servant, a scully maid, a nobody. Persephone Laville is a mystery, a muse, a sensation. But in the scandal-ridden world of Victoria, London, all secrets have a way of unravelling. So I'm wondering if, like, this is her, but she's living a double life. I've just met this main character and learned a little bit about her life. So I guess it'll be interesting to see how that unravels. Hopefully I end up enjoying it. And then I finally decided to try and get to Frog Kisser by Garth Nix, which again I believe was a new release this year. I actually bought these two together when I went down to, where was I? I went into one of the foil shops and I bought them together. Um, and I really don't know what this is about either. I think it's like a parody kind of fairy tale book. You know how Garth Nix likes to write sometimes. I think it's going to be a little bit funny. Um, but I don't really know, so I guess I'll find out if I get to it. And then the last one, I'm really upset because I've really messed up the cover trying to get a bloody sticker off. But I picked this up like maybe this year or last year. But it's the coffee book, the coffee table book of doom by Stephen Appleby and Art Lester. That's really difficult to read in that writing. And this is just one of those little books, you know, as it says, a coffee book, a coffee table book, with just ways the world can end and stuff like that. It's quite it sounded funny I read a few little bits but not too much just to see if I want to buy it really but it says in the back that everything you need to know about the end of the world but was too terrified to ask so it's just one of those silly little books with lots of illustrations running through it it's got quite big text as well so it might be an easy one to read so yeah I'm not too worried about not getting all of them read um, even if I get just a decent way through this I'll be happy because as I say I've not taken part in the year of fun in a little while and I think it's just nice to be a part of it so with that being said let's go on to what I read during August now the first one unfortunately I don't have a physical copy of it I read it on my um, 
tablet so I don't have a physical copy and also I'm not going to be talking about it because I want to do a full review for it but just so you're aware of the title it is Children Shouldn't Play With Dead Things which is the first book in the Dead Things series by Martina McAtee so I believe I ended up giving this like a five stars and as I say I will go into more detail on this I'll do its own review I've just been waiting to kind of share it in this collected review just to let you know that I hope to do a full review on it very soon so yeah keep an eye out for that if you're interested next thing I did read and one that I will be talking about is The Magical History of Unicorns by Russ Thorne um, forwarded by Raphelia and it looks like this I recently hauled this as well in my the works book haul i'll link that if you want to see so i gave this book about three stars if you was to go on goodreads and look at the description of it it really doesn't make much sense in comparison to what it's actually about i found that this book was more literally collecting all the historical um evidence not evidence but myths and legends about the unicorn and kind of trying to make it into a modern day concept and what it means rather than whatever goodreads had said i don't know if i did that justice if you read my written review down below my goodreads link is down below as usual it might make a bit more sense although it was really interesting hearing about the myths and legends and history of the unicorn Unfortunately, I feel like it diminished the magic for me. I find that with everything. This is especially the reason why I don't watch behind the scenes of films very often because I feel like it kills the magic and I almost feel like this book had that same sort of feel for me, unfortunately, but you know, it was still okay. I do feel like this book was a little bit all over the place in terms of structure and really, although I did learn something, I just felt like I'm left feeling like her huh? because it literally just collects information that you can easily find online and just sticks it together really and I wouldn't say it's done in the, the most amazing way but I don't know I guess it's, it is nice sometimes to just have all of that in one place that you can refer to if you are interested in referring to it in the future I don't know. I do like this book expressed all the different personas of a unicorn so they did talk about different cultures and explained a little bit about what their version of a unicorn was and they even went as far to explain that a unicorn could itself just be a trait not necessarily a mythical horse like beast but actually a trait that is found in different people um, which was really interesting because it went deeper than I was expecting in terms of that so I was like oh okay you're going there this is interesting I never thought of it that way but I didn't really like the idea that's just me personally I prefer to see it as a mythical horsey beast <laughs> we do have some beautiful artwork in this um, but I would have liked if we got some of those other cultures version of a unicorn illustrated in here as well because I found myself constantly um, looking to the internet to see what it looked like because they would describe it a little bit and just say oh this is the Chinese version of a unicorn or whatever but then they wouldn't kind of show you what it was which was a bit frustrating because I was like well I want to see that to compare it in my own mind you know the difference and stuff um, but you know it, it still had a lot of beautiful illustrations and images um, so yeah another thing is I would have preferred if the artist's credit was like written underneath each image but I mean they did still have like a glossary sort of thing at the back with all of the um, sources that they got from um, so that you know they still are being given credit and everything it just would have been easier again to reference to who did what you know right on the page but that's just me being particular overall i'd say this was a pretty decent read it wasn't the best thing in the world but it added to my knowledge a little bit it's very beautiful and very quick and small as well i'd recommend it if you do have a unicorn interest okay so the next book again i'm not going to talk about because i have in mind like a double review thing that i think i might do um for youtubers books i think i've mentioned that before on this channel and so yeah the next thing i read was username regenerated by joe sugg this is the second in his username i feel like it might be a trilogy or so i'm not too sure the first one was username ev which i read and reviewed last year i believe um i'll link that too i think it's a double review with the gigantic beard that was evil i think i reviewed them together for some reason um but anyway this is the sequel to username evie um again i won't talk too much about this i ended up giving it a 2.5 out of 5 stars but again if you stay tuned to that full review i'll explain why a little bit more or if you can't wait i've got my review as well on goodreads so 
there's that. Jeez, I bet I've shot myself in the foot now, but I'm getting through this quite quickly. I don't know, whenever I do like these linked videos with a few things going on at once, like a few topics, it ends up being like 20, 30 minutes long, but I feel like I'm all right. I've got about maybe, no, I've got more books. <laughs> I've got three physical books here and I've got a few more that weren't physical. Oh well, yeah, I knew I spoke too soon. So um, the next book that I ended up reading was one that I actually got invited to read by the publishers through NetGalley, which is always nice when you get invited to read something. Um, but this was called Hauntance and the Shadow by Natalia and Lauren O'Hara. I think that might be how you pronounce it. They're sisters. Laura is the illustrator, I believe, and Natalia is the writer, but I'm sure they both influenced each other in what they wanted. So it's really nice to see a sister team as well. So this is a really, really small illustrated children's book. Um, it's about Hauntance, a little girl who absolutely despites her shadow. She feels like it stops her from doing everything. She can't hide, she can't be basically a little child running carefree because she feels like this shadow is weighing her down. And then one day she has an argument with it, which is very strange but quite endearing, and the shadow leaves. Um, and then she realises just how much she needs her shadow, which is, it's a really cute story and actually quite unique in itself. This was actually less than a five minute read for me. I had to actually download it on my computer because the illustrations, I've mentioned this before, my tablet picks up illustrated books really strange and it either doesn't load or it just cuts up the image in such a way that it doesn't flow and it's very confusing to look at. So I thought the best way was to read it on my computer, which unfortunately means that it expires after 50 days. I did download it on my tablet anyway, so I do still have it if I want to go through the hassle of reading it that way. But unfortunately on my computer, the best way to read it is most likely expired by now. Um, I always like to mention just those little things in case you're wanting to buy it and obviously I don't know how it translates to other kind of e-readers and stuff but I'd like to let you guys know. I will say if I had a younger child to read it to I feel like this would have enhanced my experience just that little bit more because it would have been fun to just share it with a younger reader I think. For me on my own reading a very very young children's book illustrated and very quick to read it was just like oh it's over that's it but it was still enjoyable and still very cute now do excuse me if i've got my cultures confused but i was getting russian vibes from this and it actually reminded me of the bear and the nightingale oh, i can't remember the author's name something arden sarah arden or something. Oh, i really can't remember but again i've done a review on that too so i'll link that below if you're interested it just had that little sort of dark but not too dark um fairy tale twist um, that felt very, I don't know, Russian to me in the sense of it felt similar to the book that I just said. <laughs> There's not too much to it really and I wouldn't really agree that with the publishers that it's like the Grimm Brothers fairy tales because it's not that dark, it's not that deep but it is that sort of almost gothic style in a way but very child friendly. I kind of see what they mean but I kind of don't at the same time. You'd have to read it or at least look through the illustrations to kind of see what I mean. It kind of has those vibes but sort of doesn't, <laughs> it's very conflicting. Ultimately, although I did enjoy it, I don't think it, I enjoyed it enough for me to go out and spend £10.99 on a book that, you know, was five minutes to read, unfortunately for me. Um, if I had a child or a younger sibling or someone younger to read it to, I, I would love to get it from the library and just flick through it with them, but I wouldn't spend the money, that's just my honest opinion, unfortunately. Okay, I'm getting a bit um, concerned now because I've only got one bar left on my battery, on my camera and my neck's getting dead as well. So the next book I read during August was Cruelty by Roald Dahl. Now this is a collection of short stories um, which are tales of malice and greed. And I was really excited when I found this. Again, I found it in a Foyles bookstore um, because at the time I didn't really know that Roald Dahl had written adult books um, or adult stories generally. So I was like, oh, let's just see how it compares to his children literature. So I ended up giving this a four star overall. I'm not going to go into depth with it because I feel like I've broken it down really nicely in my Goodreads review. I've not like individually rated the stories. It's a collection of 10 stories, by the way, but I've just given my brief thoughts on each one. Um, so if you do go to that review, is a little breakdown and it's a bit straight to the point sort of thing so there's no point in me just reiterating it here so do check that out if you are interested overall i am really happy that i got around to reading some of Roald Dahl's adult literature and it was nice to have it in this format where all the similar themed short, short stories are collected together i do have another one i have the deception one but there's also madness and then there's lust as well so i'm gonna have a look out to see if i can find those two uh, but yeah it was really interesting to read this 
Okay, I think we've got two more books left, guys. So we are getting there. So the second to last one, I've just realised I've got a stain on it. Oh, that's very sad. Uh, the second to last book that I read in August was Raising Unicorns. Um, your step-by-step -step guide to starting and running a successful and magical unicorn farm by Jessica S. Marquis, illustrated by Kevin Hedgepeth. Oh, that's a mouthful and a half, isn't it? So it's this very small little book. Again, I talked about this in my works book haul, I do believe. Very short, very tiny, very cute. It's almost like one of, a little role-playing kind of book. It's like pretending that this is a real sort of thing, giving us the best advice on, start, on how to start a unicorn farm. I gave it a 3.5 stars. I think it's one of those little novelty books that's just enjoyable, like you could probably read it on a plane ride or something. It's nothing too serious. It's just a little bit of fun. But it reminds me of what I'd imagine those um, build your own adventure stories to be like. You know those books you get where it's like you choose your destination of your story and it's different each time? It kind of gives me that sort of feel because it is quite interactive in that sense which I really like. I do think this is a fun little book and again if you have an interest in unicorns, especially at this time where unicorns and mermaids have really perked up in the public eye I suppose, um, then definitely give this a go because it's quite fun. The last book I read during August was Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. Yes, I finally got around to reading this. Um, I heard so much buzz about it like a year or two ago whenever this came out basically. Everybody was loving it. And to be honest, I'm so glad that I left it until the hype really died down because I think I would have been a little bit underwhelmed with it at the time when everyone was like doing nothing but praising it basically. Anyway, before I get into that, just let me quickly tell you what it's about. So we're following a girl called Armani. She lives in this desert. Um, and it's very hard done by her. She, you know, being a girl in that time in the desert is just basically you're worthless, you're nothing, you're just there. And she really desperately wants to escape that kind of lifestyle and just change her life for the better. And I think that's the best kind of simple brief synopsis I can give you without going too deep. I keep saying deep today, why do I keep saying that? I don't know. But I end up giving this a 3.5 stars out of 5 stars. Honestly, Although it might sound harsh, I only gave it the extra 0.5 because of the last third. That's when I really started to enjoy the book. The rest of it, honestly, I was just kind of reading to finish it. I didn't really necessarily care about the story, the plot, or the characters. I just wanted to end it because I don't really like DNF in books. But I'm glad I didn't because the last third did interest me and I did quite enjoy it. Again, I've got a more in-depth review on Goodreads. Um, there's like a spoilery section if you are interested. It is hidden, so you know, just click it like usual if you do want to view the spoiler. But yeah, I've got a more in-depth one if you want to know more about my thoughts that I don't really express here. But anyway, for the most part of this book, I think I have a little bit of an unpopular opinion because I found it just okay. Um, there wasn't anything that really excited me, again, except for the last third or so, which got my interest a bit more. Um, I just felt like it lacked a bit of depth. There wasn't too much going on for me that was piquing my own interest. Um, but it was okay, and I am interested in seeing where the story goes. Um, I mean, I feel like I could have happily have had this as a standalone, but I think there are like at least three or four books or something in the series. I do say it's a series that I will keep on my radar, but I'm not in a rush to continue, and I'll most likely see if they have it in the library, as opposed to buying it unless I find it really cheap. But yeah, that's just my thoughts on Rebel of the Sands. And with that being said, that leaves us with the end of this video. I do hope you've enjoyed my little TBR and wrap up for August. Let me know what books you've been reading and feel free to link your own reviews and such down below in the comments. Um, have you read any of the books that I've mentioned today? If so, what did you think about them? As usual, no spoilers please because especially the ones that are on my TBR I haven't got to yet, I don't want any spoilers. But if you do um, mention spoilers for books that I have read and you want a discussion, please make it very obvious that spoilers are ahead in the comments because I don't want to ruin anybody's day. So anyway, I'll leave you to it. Have a great day and I'll speak to you another time soon. Bye!